Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel has revealed more cameos during Deadpool 3 in addition to Wolverine and most of the X-Men coming back. And it's Chris Evans confirming a bunch of theories that we all had. So we'll break it all down. It's clobbering time. They're still in the middle of filming the movie, so we'll be getting more footage and details soon. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'm also in the middle of Secret Invasion episodes, but that won't be quite as connected to Deadpool 3 as some of the other Marvel movies. There are a couple major story arcs that run across Marvel Phase 5 and 6 leading into Avengers 5. All the Deadpool 3 stuff is more connected to what's happening with Kang in the multiverse war, all the incursions. That's why they're basically doing a version of Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, but it's more like Deadpool Kills the Fox Marvel Universe. Just because that's where most of these cameo scenes are coming from, from the Fox Marvel movies. The big news you probably saw in your feeds recently is that one of the confirmed major cameos is Chris Evans coming back as his human torch from the Fantastic Four. And he even talked about doing this a while ago, so a lot of people assumed that he would be in the movie. I mean, I don't exactly look the same anymore. I was 15, <laughs> almost 20 years ago. Oh my God, I'm old. Um, <laughs> but I really love that character. Yeah, look, I, I would love it. I would love it. That would actually be an easier sell to me than coming back as Cap, you know what I mean? Cap is right. so precious to me and, you know, I, I almost don't want to disrupt what, what, what a beautiful experience that was. But Johnny Storm, I feel like he didn't really get his day. That was before Marvel really found its footing. So, uh, you know, I, I loved that role and, you know, who knows. Even though it seems like he doesn't want to come back as his version of Steve Rogers' Captain America in the MCU movies, it's important to note that he didn't say he'd never come back as Steve Rogers, just that he didn't want to come back as the character right away, like right after Avengers Endgame. He wanted to give that some time to breathe. But it's been almost 17 years since Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. That's why he's totally cool coming back as Human Torch, or at least as his version of Human Torch. He literally just did a cameo scene in Ryan Reynolds' Free Guy movie for a Captain America joke. So that explains the connection between the two of them. Like, oh, he probably just asked him to come back for Deadpool 3 right after that. I know there are a ton of questions about which version of Human Torch it's going to be. A lot of the versions of these cameo scenes won't be from the main X-Men universe versions of the characters. It'll just be the actors coming back playing different variants of the characters in most cases. But for those of you asking about where all those Fox Marvel movies took place, like which universe did those come from? A while ago, the writers of the X-Men First Class movie revealed that Fox had them write their own Fox Universe version of a Marvel Civil War movie crossover with the Fantastic Four versus the X-Men. Had they continued developing the movie, that would have come out around the same time X-Men Days of Future Past came out. But during Days of Future Past, they confirmed that the original X-Men movies took place in the same universe as the First Class movies just later in the timeline. So that means the Fantastic Four movies would have been also in that same universe because they were planning on doing a big crossover with all those characters. So it basically confirms that all of the Fox Marvel movies took place in the same universe, even the ones in the early 2000s. Now, there were some jokes about this during Deadpool 2's post credit scene where Deadpool goes into the Wolverine Origins movie to kill the other Deadpool version of himself. Hey, it's me. Don't scratch. Just cleaning up the timelines. So the way they explain that is kind of like the Loki explainer, where some timelines are very similar, but slightly different. When you talk about alternate universes, like when does an alternate timeline become an alternate universe, that's usually when things are radically different. What wound up happening with that Fantastic Four versus X-Men movie is that Brian Singer came back to do Days of Future Past. Like, they decided to do Days of Future Past instead of the Fantastic Four versus X-Men movie. So the studio just scrapped the idea. But had Disney not bought Fox and things had continued on in that X-Men timeline with the Fox movies, they might have eventually done a Fantastic Four crossover movie. But in the short term, they just chose to continue with that X-Men timeline. We got X-Men Apocalypse, Dark Phoenix, then Disney bought Fox. All that went down. They got the characters back. Now they're doing new versions of all those characters in totally new movies. But before they do that, they're using Deadpool 3 as a no way home type of movie for all the Fox Marvel characters coming back. Some of them will also come back during Avengers 6 Secret Wars, but they're giving all of them a big swan song before recasting most of those roles. Like, we're not erasing all of your movies, you're all still canon, you just come from different universes, or in the case of the Fox Marvel movies, the same universe. Most of the plot of Deadpool 3 revolves around a House of M universe that Deadpool travels to, where the X-Men and the mutants reign supreme, Magneto takes over the planet, and Marvel hasn't said which part of the movie Chris Evans' Human Torch would appear in. 
There are a couple points in the movie where they pay off the end of Deadpool 2 with Cable's time travel device where he's hopping around different timelines. Chris Evans' cameo scene could come during one of those when he's just hopping across different timelines. It might wind up being a smaller cameo scene, kind of like his Free Guy cameo scene, like really quick blink and you'll miss it, where he just appears for a second as Deadpool is running across those different timelines. Most of the movie, though, is meant to be kind of like Deadpool kills the Fox Marvel universe. Most of the craziness will happen in the House of M universe that he travels to during that part of the movie near the climax. I believe they're supposed to get really crazy with the cameos and a bunch of variants of the same characters will be on screen together in a big battle, like multiple versions of Wolverine, multiple versions of Deadpool and others together on screen. Imagine a much better version of what they did with that concept in Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania with all the different Ant-Men together on screen, but just a bunch of Deadpools, Wolverines, and maybe a couple other characters. The funny thing about this, Hugh Jackman kind of spoiled the idea a while ago when he revealed he'd be playing multiple versions of Wolverine during the movie, not just a single version of Wolverine. Because, you know, it's science. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't have to screw with the Logan timeline, which was important to me and I think probably to the fans. So all because of this device they have in the Marvel world of moving around timelines. Now we can go back. Hugh Jackman trying to join the spoiler bros. Tom Holland was also joking about this too recently where he tried to say that he was giving away fewer spoilers than anyone else on the last Spider-Man movie, No Way Home. Like he is now really good about not giving away spoilers compared to everyone else. For those of you that are waiting to see Chris Evans come back in the MCU as his Steve Rogers, I think there will be some references to him in Captain America 4. It'd be weird if there weren't. What really happened to old man Cap, just to pay off that moon base theory scene from Falcon and Winter Soldier. We also might see Chris Evans come back during Avengers 6 as another alternate reality version of Captain America. They're going to base some of those movies on Avengers Forever, and during that storyline, Kang actually gets an evil version of the Avengers from an alternate reality to fight the good Avengers. That would be really cool to bring back some of the original Avengers who have died, like, for instance, Iron Man, Captain America, as alternate reality versions that are fighting the main Avengers. Everyone's going to be clamoring for Elizabeth Olsen to have some kind of cameo as Scarlet Witch just because of her relationship with Magneto in the comics. Because a long time ago, Elizabeth Olsen did say that when they pay off Magneto being Scarlet Witch's true father in the movies, she wanted it to be a version of Ian McKellen's Magneto instead of Michael Fassbender based on their ages. It would also just make more sense if you bring the older version of Magneto for something like that. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to go with Sir Ian McKellen. Even though technically, because of all the timeline craziness now in Days of Future Past, Michael Fassbender is now canonically the younger version of Ian McKellen's Magneto, so technically they play the exact same version of the character. And when I say House of M plot, supposedly the timeline Deadpool meets Wolverine is inspired by the events of House of M. If you didn't read that comic book storyline, that's one of the most famous X-Men storylines, one of the most famous Scarlet Witch storylines, where Magneto in all mutants reigns supreme over the world, homo superior compared to homo sapiens. Magneto basically takes over the entire planet in that storyline using Scarlet Witch's reality warping powers, like MCU Scarlet Witch creating a massive hex around the world. There were so many theories about this during WandaVision because it almost wound up happening like the boundaries of the hex during the show kept expanding throughout the episodes. Eventually, it would have covered most of the planet, altering everyone inside who wasn't powerful enough to withstand her chaos magic. There are only a couple people in the Marvel Universe that are powerful enough to do that, like her chaos magic wouldn't work on the higher level cosmic entities or the Celestials. The Celestials were also immune to the effects of the snap. That's how powerful they're meant to be. But in Deadpool 3, the rumor is that in the alternate universe, Professor X and the X-Men originally wound up siding with Magneto in the Brotherhood of Mutants instead of fighting against them during the events of the first X-Men movie. Remember, during the events of that movie, Magneto was trying to forcibly mutate a giant portion of the world so that the majority of the population would be mutants and they would reign supreme over regular humans. During the movie, Deadpool supposedly winds up trying to win over that universe's version of Wolverine, played by Hugh Jackman, of course, and he'll have a version of the yellow costume from the comics. That also makes it sound like those other X-Men that are coming back will wear much more comic book accurate costumes like the ones from X-Men Apocalypse too. That would actually be pretty cool. And ultimately, it's that universe that Deadpool winds up causing the destruction of. And Kevin Feige also said that in addition to that, just like within the scope of Marvel Phase 6, Deadpool 3 would be a big tipping point with the Incursion storyline leading up to Avengers 5, Kang Dynasty, and Secret Wars. 
a bunch of universes being destroyed, and it sounds like Deadpool does something so crazy that it winds up causing a bunch of incursions and tons of universes get destroyed, not just that one, and that'll pay off the Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe part of the storyline that they're also adapting. So it's kind of like they're combining the Loki storyline with the TVA with a version of House of M and Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. But this is just the beginning for Deadpool 3 and all those cameos. We've already found out about a few other people that are coming back in that movie, so I'll do a new video for them soon. Let me know in the comments which other characters do you want to see come back in Deadpool 3. It has been a long journey. <laughs> it really has. It hasn't though. It feels like it's gone by incredibly fast. Uh, I feel like we just got here. I feel like we never even left. Um, I have no idea where I am in time and space. My full Secret Invasion Episode 3 video will post next. Make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Click here for that video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that. And click here for that new Fantastic Four Doctor Doom video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and maximum effort.